We see in this text that Elijah has various symptoms of losing perspective. He had lost perspective. And the first we could say is the fear of man. In chapter 18 of 1 Kings, we find he's victorious. But now in 19, he's fleeing with fear. He's fleeing from Jezebel. Jezebel, a woman, is threatening him. And she says, send this man a message. May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them, the prophets of Baal that were killed. She was angry, and she's after him. So Elijah, it says in verse 3 that he was afraid. Was he afraid of God? No, he was, ran for his life because of this one woman. But it was Jezebel to this day, a name that no, I don't believe any parent would want to name their child Jezebel because it's a name that represents evil. And so fear of man, when we become afraid of people, we're apt to lose perspective. We have lost perspective, our fear of people. Despondency, which means we have lost heart. We have lost hope. We are so discouraged that we can't go forth. And he seems to have that, woe is me. You know, he lays down and he doesn't want to go any further. He sees no hope in his future. That's Elijah, despondency. That is a symptom of having lost perspective. And I can say honestly that I have felt despondency many times. What is the use? I work and work with people and they discourage me. Few become faithful. Many forget about what they have just heard. And then the martyr syndrome. That is, he says, woe is me, I am a martyr. And, and here you have this, this phrase, it's repeated. Actually, a verse is repeated, verse 10. Again, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. I've been working hard, harder than anyone else. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. Woe is me, I might as well die. What's the use? And so uh, I'm, uh, they're trying to kill me. Would God allow that to his prophet? Was that on God's mind? I don't think so. We find at the end of the chapter, or uh, later on in the book of First Kings, that that's not God's idea at all. In fact, the furthest thing from death is on God's mind, God's perspective, what he plans to do is to take Elijah up in a chariot, and Elijah never dies. He and Enoch, in the book of Genesis, to our knowledge, is the, are the only people that didn't have a death. They were taken without having a death. A martyr syndrome. Symptoms are signs that we've lost perspective. They're going to have a conspiracy against me, and it doesn't have to deal with death, but you might think, everybody's after me, everybody's against me. You've lost perspective, no doubt. You've lost perspective. But we move from symptoms to causes. When you see these kind of symptoms, fear of man, hopelessness, despondency, and then thinking of everybody's against me, Probably a perspective has been lost and you aren't looking at things as God sees them. Well, symptoms, what are, the, what are the causes then of these? Some of them may be quite obvious and basic, a lack of necessities of life, a lack of the necessities of life. In the book of James, we find the author talking about uh, Elijah and his mighty miracles and his prayers. But he also slips in this phrase, Elijah was a man just like us, of flesh and blood. He had the same kinds of emotions and feelings and thoughts that we have, even though God used him mightily in power, miraculous signs. Elijah was known in the New Testament as it's, his name comes up some 27 times. Again, known for power and miracles and wonders. 
But he was not, Elijah was not so spiritual that he could do without food and sleep, without rest, without it affecting his judgment. Some people may act so spiritual, they say, well, I am above uh, the needs of the flesh. I don't need to sleep. I don't need to eat. I don't need the common things that other, I don't need friends. I'm so close to God. I don't need the simple things of, of the earthly life of food and, and things. Well, sorry if Elijah needed them. Those people need them. And even Jesus needed uh, basic necessities of life. So it could be that the causes are simply that you've denied yourself certain basic things. Uh, let's go back to sleep again. Uh, like a student studying for tests, and they are studying, studying, cramming for exams, and they become so weary and tired that they become despondent. What's the use? Why? Uh, why bother? Or a person denies themselves food and they become weak and they lose perspective because of that. Sometimes losing perspective, losing God's view is as simple as eating good food, nutritious food, and getting a good night's rest. And we find that Elijah uh, has those things provided. An angel provides food and he is allowed to sleep and he's given solitude. A lack of the necessities of life can cause one to lose perspectives and lose heart. Um, but then a cause can be a shift in focus from God to self. And I'm touching on this again, just as we talked about the needs of man and we can be so wrapped up in ourselves and all the needs we have. You find a difference if you look at these two chapters that again and again, the focus of Elijah was the Lord and his power in chapter 18. Again and again, it was the Lord and by his might. Very few times do we find the word I in reference to Elijah. But in chapter 19, you could count the no a number of times that he says, I, I have been very zealous, zealous for the Lord. I have done this, I have done that. I have had enough uh, and uh, take my life. I'm no longer uh, any better than my ancestors. Again and again, it's about I, himself. And so we lose perspective when we start talking about and thinking of our own needs, our own life in obsession. Everything's about us. And so he's slipped from God Almighty to poor me, to poor little me. And this is a warning, a caution for any of us. And it could be that we start in, in boastfulness of what we have done or what God has done through us and how he's used us. But then uh, in that boastfulness, we become despondent and discouraged because the power of the Almighty and the word of the Lord has been neglected by us. Well, we move from causes to cures. How does this man get better? Well, basic necessities of life are added to his life. He's given food. He's offered sleep. He sleeps. He wakes up and he sleeps again. Solitude is very, very important. He's away from the crowd. The crowds can uh, uh, drain us. People can drain us. And Jesus understood this. We can see that by his habit of breaking away from the disciples and the other people around him and he would go to a solitary place. We'll look at that again tomorrow. A solitary place and meet with the Lord Almighty, his God. So solitude, uh, you can't always be with people. And even when you're in a very busy city, you can find a corner somewhere, a closet. As the Lord said, go in your closet and pray. We need solitude. He's given solitude. He's away. He's by himself. He's in a rocky area, away from people. We need people, but then we need to be away from people. 
TVS Seminary is a great way to invest in the kingdom of God. Please consider making a donation to support this effective educational and outreach ministry today. We exist upon your gracious giving. Please donate to support TVS Project's continuation and growth. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. And then there's a word from God, and this is really important. The word of God is so important to renew our right perspective, God's view of looking at things. We could say it's a word that, comfort, uh, that comforts. A and note just uh, what has been read before. There's an earthquake, but the Lord isn't in the almighty earthquake, and he wasn't in the wind. And he wasn't in the shattering of rocks or any of that. And, and it wasn't the fire. But after the fire came a gentle whisper. Now the word of God can take many forms. We can get uh, connected with God by some miracle that we read about in scripture. Or God may choose to do a miracle in our own lives. A miracle. He may get our attention, maybe like he got the attention of Moses with the burning bush. Or it could be a thunderstorm or whatever else, a fearful situation. But here, it's simply a word of God that's a whisper, a whisper. Do we get quiet enough to hear God whisper? Do we slow down in our Bible reading to hear him speak to us. For his word is written not just to the Bible characters that are there, like Elijah and Elisha and the prophets of Baal and all of that. These things are written for us and for our benefit. Do we slow down in our reading? Do we get quiet enough to hear God speaking to us through his word? A whisper. Do we read until we hear him? say something to us. And we may not always understand what he says. It's a word from God, a word that comforts. It's just the fact that God has spoken. Silence has been broken and God has spoken. And that's soothing to my soul, to my being, to my life. God has spoken. But it's a word that redirects as you find it here. Uh, the Lord tells him in verse 15, uh, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. And when you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint, uh, anoint Jehu son of Nij Nimnish king over Israel. And anoint Elijah son of Shephthat and Abel, or from Abel. Uh, to, to, to succeed you as a prophet. And so these people will take over for you. It's a new direction, a redirection by God. Jael will put to death any who escape from the sword of Hazael. And Elijah will put to death any who escape from the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 70,000 in Israel. We'll stop right there. But, okay, it's a word that comforts. But then God often gives us a word that redirects. And everyone who grows to be old, that person needs to realize it's no longer about him or her. It's about the people God is going to use after them. This is very important. It's called mentoring. That we redirect our focus from ourselves and our own gifts to training others, to helping others in the new generation. And that's really what's happening here. Elijah, your days are numbered. This is an opportunity to tell you to anoint others. And my power, as it went through you, will be distributed and spread through many voices now. And many individuals will be powerful, replacing you. And then it's a word that corrects, corrects. Yes, Elijah needs the rod of God of correction because he has gotten into a bad frame of falsehood. All of, uh, falsehood is bad. But he's lost his perspective to the point of saying, 
I'm the only one. I'm the only one left. But God corrects him and says, oh, by the way, yet I have reserved, verse 18, uh, 7,000 in Israel who have, whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and all whose mouths have not kissed Baal. You think you're alone. You're alone. The only one. No, there's 7,000 Israelites. There are others. You aren't alone. You have to be corrected in your despondent a loss of perspective. You've gone astray in your thinking. You don't know what's going on. And have you ever been there? Just nod. Have you ever been there? So discouraged that you don't see the truth. You're actually believing lies and thinking it's all caving in around you. That's what happens. This is a highly spiritual man and he's lost perspective. He's lost God's view on it. And it's very unfortunate, but it happens to God's, some of God's best servants. In fact, all of them at some point in time. 